in the past I've tended to just focus on uh, personal work and I thought it might be interesting to some of you just to go through a uh, professional um, work brief today so um, this this may be something that will interest some of you um, and I'm hoping it will it will give you a bit of insight if you do decide to get into uh, a role like this. Um, I will do some painting hopefully in the second half but we'll see if we can um, get through the uh, the process quite quickly. Um, first of all I'd probably just like to say that if you want to get into this kind of thing um, you can approach companies directly. If you if you do that I mean that's a that's a good way to um, get noticed but it can be um, a narrow avenue to uh, to go down so I'd highly suggest if you don't have a social media page to get an Instagram at least and post some artwork on there that would be um, interesting to somebody who's basically looking for an artist for a, a card job or something like that so post your your fantasy um, pictures on on social media and and there's a very good chance that somebody will contact you because people scroll through Google um, and Instagram all the time looking for artists Thanks. and I found that most of my um, commissions tend to come through people that found me on social media rather than me um, approaching a, a company. Um, so with that, I'm gonna jump straight into the brief. So, so this, is, <clears throat> this is a job that I did for a, a game called Varia. And this is a fantasy card game. Um, this image on the side is one of my pictures from my portfolio. Um, this was something that they were drawn to and this is um, a sketch that was sent to me by the Varia team and this is a an indication of the, the image that um, we're going to try and build. I found this um, really useful because not everybody does this and um, although it's it's not it's not the greatest uh, piece of art it's got all the information in there and I was able to basically hit the nail on the head pretty quickly from um, this this text that we've got explaining the what the card needs to look like and then this little um, thumbnail underneath. So in the past um, I've done I've done quite a few cards and you'll generally submit a black and white sketch of some kind. You might do two or three. Um, the art director will pick one of those and then you can move forwards with the with the colouring and the rendering. Um, sometimes this can um, take more than two or three. Um, so with that in mind, I took a slightly different approach um, on this particular job. And I used a 3D model. So this is just something that some artists tend to use to to help with um, anatomy and, and perspective. Um, I've set it up exactly the same position as the uh, as the thumbnail over here, and um, I I just sent this to the director and I was like I don't know how you feel about this. Um, I haven't I haven't drawn it. I'm I'm obviously using a model so. Is this is this going to work? Are you are you happy to go with this? And he he was actually he was really on board with it. He was like, "Yep, yeah, I love this. This is this is working." So because I've got a 
an actual 3D model to use. Um, we can position the camera and we can get different perspectives quite easily. And this, this saved quite a lot of time. Um, so if I'd drawn all this out, um, I probably would have struggled with uh, some of the angles um, here and there and, you know, an arm sticks out or a leg sticks out a little bit too far. Um, but because this is um, a true form, you can just spin the camera around and, and you can end up with something quite quickly that looks like the, um, the, the brief that they're after. So, um, I mean, the brief basically detailed that this character is, it's a, it's a golem. So he's, he's kind of, kind of like a, a robotic kind of magic, um, character. Um, he's, he's bent, bent over backwards and this lightning bolt is coming in, deflecting off this, um, shield that's actually on his head. It's going up to the sword and it's, it's going off again, off screen. This is the uh, this is the one that we picked. So there was a few few different versions. This was the one that we ended up going with. And then we started to um, go through coloring <clears throat> coloring the image. Uh, sorry, I'll skip back a little bit. Now this was um, another picture that basically the art director had drawn on the photograph that I'd sent to him. This again was really useful. So we've got this lightning bolt coming in, going up to the sword and it's been directed out again. And, um, and this just basically eliminated any doubt. So this really did save um, lots, lots of time. The, the shield needed to lock into the sword. So this is just a, a close up um, that I sent. Um, this would be um, the stages that you go through. So every time you, you block in, um, you can send it to to the company and say, are we going in the right direction with this? So I've blocked in just the basic color and we've got the outline so we can still see um, the anatomy and what's going on. We've got the blocking of the clothes and the colors. There was also a design sheet. Um, I can't show you that because it, it was um, designed by other artists. Um, and all of this information <clears throat> the clothes and, and the way he looks was actually predetermined. So I I didn't have to really think about that too much. I'm just thinking about the position, <clears throat> excuse me. And as we, <clears throat> excuse me, and as we go through, um, I've used layers. So we're putting the background in, putting a, a texture, onto this background, gets rid of the, uh, the flatness of that layer. Um, I've used um, the free transform tool. So you can see it's, it's a big blocky texture there. And then in, in the background, it's started to flatten out on the horizon. I'll, uh, I'll go into that a little bit later. It just gives it that depth so we can see the perspective going off into this kind of area. Um, there's a slight difference there just in um, the value that's to do with the um, where the line was, <clears throat> excuse me. So we've got this light on this side and this side it's it's just going to be a little bit darker. It's like the the energy source won't pass this line. And that was, that was something that the, uh, the director really wanted to, to get on this card. So, and 
as I say, I've just started to block this in now. So there's the there's the basic colours and the background. Starting to move up on the details. This is mostly done with um, a blender mixer brush. Um, it's a custom brush that I tend to use quite a lot. And then down here, this is mostly done with the glow brush. And lots of this is done with the glow brush as well. So just with um, two or three brushes, this, um, this painting is starting to come together. We, we got to, to this stage and I'd sent this version off. Um, it's got quite a lot of the details coming in. And the, the director told me that he didn't really like the, the background because it was, it was too blue and we needed to uh, do something about that. So because I've got this on layers, we can basically switch out the background quite easily. Um, so there was a few different versions of this background um, just being thrown around and we eventually went with something that was was a bit warmer, it was a bit darker. Um, I've used a slightly different texture on there now as well. Um, it's a kind of a paint splat. That's, a, that's another custom brush I'll, I'll show you uh, again later on where uh, where I've got that and what I was doing with it. Um, the the whole image now has it's it's probably a lot darker than it was before, and that's because I'm getting to the point where I'm going to start to finish off and use that glow brush. Um, the glow brush tends to work really well on a darker background, and if you if you select it in a darker colour, then you can really build it up gradually. And Maybe this... one of our attendees wants to know, how often do you recommend keeping the client updated with the artwork? Like, does it go back and forth pretty often or does the client stipulate that? Uh, yeah, it tends to, it tends to be, <clears throat> Sometimes they will actually say um, we we will like to see it um, more often. Um, some people will actually say we'll just give you the brief, send us the sketch, then render the whole thing in colour, send that one back to us, and then we'll give you a a final um, just um, final idea of where it wants to go, and so. So you could end up just doing it once or twice, but I tend to try and send it when there's been something quite big that's changed. Um, and it, it can save time because if you if you race too far ahead, you you may have to go back and and fix things. Um, if you're using a, a lot of layers. I mean, that's fine, but if you've collapsed a few layers and, and you've maybe gone a little bit too far in one direction and, and something needs to be changed, you may have to do quite a lot of work to try and correct it. So, um, yeah, I, d I do tend to try and send um, probably about four or five different versions. Um, if they're If they're really happy, each time then you know you you can get through it quite quickly yeah thank you very much that's uh, also a really great tip in there um also i know that you are planning to do a little bit of uh, painting or demonstrating some techniques later uh, because lorian is wondering uh, if you could please show how you use the glow brush yeah yeah i'll, I'll get to that um after after just um, these these last few few images, actually, um, 
I just wanted to try and go through these um, these stages one at a time. But yeah, I thought if I get through them quite quickly, <laughs> then um, we'll have a little bit more time for drawing. Thanks, Davey. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is this is the this is the last image. So um, just going from that one, we we've, we've used the the glow brush. We've put all these um, final details on there. Um, it does tend to I say the the glow brush tends to work best on a darker background, and if you can collapse all of your layers and then try and use it, because it it doesn't work too well um, if you're using um, sort of like PNG layers and then you, you go off the um, the actual painting you'll you'll end up getting that kind of ghosting look so what I'll tend to do is um, when the image is kind of ready for that final um, effects layer I'll just copy all of the layers collapse them and then you've got a, a copy to work with and you can always get rid of it or um, just delete parts of it if you need to but um, yeah I'll, I'll try and um, I'll try and show you some of the some of the things that you can do with the glow brush because I, I do tend to use it quite a lot um, but it does tend to be the the kind of finishing off um, effect brush but it is really uh, useful so I'll just show you the this is the final card um, with its um, with all the information on it against the artwork, and um, yeah, I was I was pretty I was pretty happy with this. And I say using the using the the figurine, it just made the whole process um, a lot quicker. And um, yeah, I think. Um, that's that's probably all I've got to say on creating it. Um, I have got my uh, tablet set up. If anybody wanted to know um, how I've got my my tablet set up, so this is my um, my two screens. So I've got I've got the Wacom tablet on the bottom. Um, this is a a Dell Dell Inspire on. Um, I've actually got, as you can see, I've got the the PC above. Um, I did have them side by side um, for for quite a long time, and then I found it easier to um, to have it on the top. Um, the screen, I, this is it actually flattened down, so I've probably got it at about a 45 degree angle. Um, and then there's there's a shelf that's kind of hidden, um, and then I have um, a few kind of drawing tools that I use, and I can just position those in front of me. And um, yeah, it's a it's just a, a good little spot to put a few things in there. There's uh, some like plastic dinosaurs that I'll I'll use if um, I'm drawing dragons and things like that. Um, there's a there's a horse and a dog and a and a head in there, but um, yeah, if, if anybody's interested in that, that's um, that's the way I've got my um, drawing tablet set up. That's a really great piece of information. Thanks for sharing that. And um, your little figurines were really great. Also, uh, Marek is wondering, you know, in the beginning for the card inspiration, you showed them uh, the model that was posing bent over backwards. Um, yeah. Was that given to you by the client, or where did that come from? Yeah, the the idea um, behind the behind the brief, it was um, there's there's a little bit down here. Um, it says um, the reason they want the golem to be bending over backwards in this way is to further communicate that these humanoid golems are not so human after all, and they are capable of some peculiar movements and stances so um yeah that was that was basically their idea um and then i'd positioned the the model 
um, as close as I could and then <laughs> made that kind of paper cone and, and just stuck it on, um, on his head. Um, and then from that, that's where we, that's where we get the slightly different angle because it, it'd look a little bit too flat if we left it um, like that. So it just made for a more interesting perspective um, moving it around. But but yeah, the 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 idea, all of the information, it it came from um, the the Varia team and. I, I chose this particular um, company to talk about because I, I think they they do a really good job of describing everything that they want. And if you if you do have any questions and doubts, they they seem to like really um, clear anything up really quickly. And um, it's it's not often that you do get these little sketches, um, and I found that really useful. Um, I've I've done quite a few cards for them. And um, sometimes you are working on those sketches and they're like, well, no, we want it a, a little bit more like this and a little bit more like that. And this just, um, it's just really helps get to that final idea a lot quicker. You, you don't want to spend like a month working on something if, um, if you're trying to, trying to do something like this and, and making a, a living out of it. Um, so it, it just, it's just not it's not feasible to spend that much time um, working on one painting. Uh, thanks, Davey. But like everyone seems to be interested in finding out where exactly the three D model the the model actually came from. Is that something you own? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought that might might happen. Um, it's it's just something that I mean, if you search just artist tools um, like mannequins um, you can find these on the internet I, I think I bought one directly from a manufacturer and then I, I may have found a couple of other ones on um, Amazon they were, they were a bit cheaper um, I have seen them for like 50 50 dollars and then I I bought two for about ten dollars each so um, you, you can get them like really cheap um but yeah it's 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 the kind of thing if you if you do just search search for um art tools art mannequins or something like that you you should be able to find them online it's um it's it's probably about six six inches high or something like that um it it comes with this sword it's it's got like a little um, a little gun that comes with it as well, and it's um, yeah, I've, I've just found it really useful. Um, and I've, Thanks I've for got, sharing that. <laughs> that's no problem. That's no problem. Um, okay, I'll, I'll just try and um, I'll try and just knock up a, a speed painting or something now. So um, if you if you have any other any other questions, I'm I'm happy to um, just take them whenever. Yeah, I think we can move on to the painting section because uh, you know people were wondering about the glow brush, and uh, I, I'm sure they will love to see a little bit of how you use the glow brush. Yeah, sure. Um, as I say, it it's kind of well, it, I mean, it's kind of something that you probably want to use towards the end. Um, of a painting, um, I mean, I can I can I can quickly show you now. Say it works best on a layer as well, so you don't want to create a new blank layer um, and and just because um, it tends to tends to come out this um, like this kind of darker color. See, so that's it on a layer, and that's it without. Um, and if you use it quite small and then use the pressure of the pen and you just go back over that same spot, you can see it really burns through <laughs> the uh, the page. Um, select it really, really low down on the color wheel so it won't come out, won't come out black it will will build that color 
um, but um, if you have it up here, it will it will build too quickly. So it will go it will go white really fast. Whereas if you have it down here, it will it will build up a lot slower, and you'll get a lot more of that um, of, of that color. So you, I mean, you can keep changing the color. I mean, that's it quite gently, and you can dig in and it will it will brighten up a bit and then you just keep going over that same spot and then again it will really burn through i mean it looks like a, almost like a neon light um i mean it's great for fire and stuff like that i tend to use it a lot for things like that um i was doing something recently and it was um i was i was like yeah, that's uh, that's that's the job for the glow brush. Get the uh, get the glow brush out for the fire. Um, <clears throat> this is it's my custom brush that I always tend to use. But um, I'll just quickly show you. A bit too far down there. I was just trying to try and draw a, a fire. So drag that, drag that down. And then you, you get that, you get that burn that comes through. And I'll, uh, I'll end up using it to put those little sparks that come off. You can really dig in and <clears throat> get a really, really glowy spark. If you really blow it out as well, you can get that overall glowiness to it. Probably normally use a, a reference when drawing some fire, but yeah, it's um, it's definitely the brush to use if you if you're after something that's that's going to really have a high contrast. <clears throat> um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll use it for rim lighting as well, stuff like that. So, like you may have a figure, and, and you can just like go around the outside of um, like the face, or um, there's like say like um, I think like the shield. I was using it around this um, this edge. So it's really it's really good to build up on these edges. So that, that bright red, and then it goes into that blue. That's that's all all the glow brush there. Um, all of these red sparks here. That's just me just digging in, um, using the the pressure of the tablet just to build up um, those sparks. Um, but, um, but yeah, is, is that is that useful? <laughs> That's really great, Davy. Thank you. It's such a great versatile brush to use, um, and also for users who don't know, it has been in Painter for a very long time, and most of our artists absolutely love the glow brush. Um, another question uh, for you, Davey, is there, um, do you tend to use the glow brush um, with a type of composite method or, or a merge mode? Um, or does that not really matter? Um, not, not necessarily. It's, um, I mean, you can layer colors over the top of it, um, or the, you can use like the com composite over the top. Um, 
I, I do tend to use a shadow map if um, if I feel everything's gone a little bit too bright and I just need to put some shadows in in a few places. Um, so I might just do something like that. Uh, you can take that way over into the colour, but you want to keep this quite bright. And then you can um, you can add a lot more depth um, into the fire if if you need to, and you can always go back over the top. So I could I can collapse that, and then just add add a bit more if I need to. Um, I did I did something like this uh, in a recent painting, so <laughs> that's why I'm kind of using this as an example. Uh, you mentioned a shadow map. Would you be able to explain that a little bit more? Yeah, the shadow map's just um, it's just in this in this layer up here. So you've got this drop down, which is the uh, the composite um, layers menu. Um, the shadow map is kind of like uh, you can think of it like an ink layer almost. So you can drop it over the top. Of things and, and you're going to be able to see through it no matter what it goes on um, you probably want to select quite high up though so if you see on the color wheel up here even when it's I mean it's not quite white but it's still really bright you can um, you can still easily see it you can move it over and get a bit more colour, but you definitely don't want to go down here because it'll it'll be really really dark unless that's what you're after. But I do tend to use it um, literally as as a shadow, so um, I don't tend to worry too much about the the shadow work um, initially in my paintings, and then I can always um, blend this in like later on. And you, you're going to get all the different variations of the colour um, just from using this, this same this same brush. So, um, I mean, really, you, you'd want a lot more light around this fire. I've just kind of gone over it, but um, but yeah, it's it, it's a it's a really really good tool. I tend to use it all the time. Um, again, it's something I'll probably use towards the end um, of a painting. It's more of a kind of finishing off um, sort of brush. But there's, um, yeah, there's a bunch of different um, different categories in here, and, but that's that tends to be the one that I use the most. Great, thank you. Um, Davy. before we move on with more questions, uh, I'm sure you had something planned for us. Do you want to continue and we can take more questions later? Um, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if, um, if, if you've got more ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. So uh, okay. Barbara was wondering, uh, you know, you showed us the, the model earlier and then she was wondering how do you how do you go from there? Uh, do you use the model as a reference and then start painting on a layer? Um, or do you do like an exact replica of that model? Or how do you use, how do you go from that model to start your sketching or painting? Right, okay. Um, I would basically just import the um, the image. So I just go to go to place. And then I just open open the image up. So so we'll have I, that is the one that we used. Um, and then I'll just select a a new layer. Probably use the the lasso tool maybe, or um, or just kind of block it in. But I mean you, you basically you just want the um, 
you just want the basic information. So um, I'll just quick, I'm obviously uh, doing this quite quickly. Um, you can add and take away. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've now got that selected and then I'd probably just fill it in. Uh, make sure you haven't got preserve transparency um, selected. And then um, you can actually use um, the, the shadow map here. Um, so if I, if I put that onto shadow map, I'll just turn it down a little bit. So, so you can still see that image. Um, we've got a, a blocking of the character. I'll just deselect that. So now, um, now we can we can pick out some of these details. I'll probably just select another um, layer and uh, tend to use the scratch tool if I'm if I'm just kind of sketching. Uh, I'll probably just go in and just pick out some of these um, like cross contours and things like that. So the shoulder, select a slightly darker color, like the shoulder here is, um, is going round. You've got the head there, you've got the nose, this arm's going up here. And you can just, just pick out some of this information. So we'll get rid of the, the photograph. Um, and then we'll go on to using the, the reference again that the, uh, the brief has provided you with. So I, I don't know whether I mentioned, but this, um, yeah, this character isn't, isn't my um, design. It was already pre-designed, so I knew what the the clothes needed to look like and, and things like that. But um, but yeah, just a very kind of quick blocking um, just to give you a bit of information when you when you get rid of that and then and then you can just use that as your sketch. Um, I'd probably lock this layer. So um, we haven't gone all the way to the edges here, but um, once I've locked that layer in place, probably go in and start to just block in some some basic light here and there. The the light's going to be coming from this direction, so and well, actually, there's the shield was round round the head, so um, yeah, you start to start to build up um, the information bit by bit um, and yeah that that would be that would be how I would get from from that that photograph um, initially let's change that back to default that's that's really a, a very good tip thanks Davy okay Um, yeah, I don't really know what you guys want to see. Um, uh, so you've answered most of the questions, and there is one question from Stephen Bolt, who works on the painter team. Uh, okay. He's asking if if there is a type of brush you wish you had in Painter. And Davey, we know that you create a lot of your brush brushes, but is there something that you haven't been able to create or find in Painter? Stephen is listening, so... You oh, okay. can make your wish now. <laughs> um, I, th I think there actually is all of all of the brushes um, now that 
that I, I wanted to to use. Um, I mean, there's there's that many of them in the library. Um, I used to I used to want for a like I've I've got this texture brush here, um, which is I think I actually just took a took a photograph of me throwing some oh sorry of luck with that. Um, so I've just thrown some paint onto a piece of paper and then I've made a, a brush out of it. Um, and for a while I thought oh, I'd really like a brush that will actually do this um, sort of naturally, like splat the paint everywhere. But um, I, I think there are brushes that do that now um, quite well. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there really is any anything that I can, I can think of right now that I'd, that I'd really, really want. Um, I, I tend to use probably the same sort of ten brushes, um, and there's there's quite quite a lot of variety in those. So, um, but but then occasionally I do go hunting for something, and um, I can I can usually always find something that I, that I will find useful um, with a couple of tweaks. So um, yeah, it's I, I don't really know. I can't, I can't really think of anything that's missing. There's there's, there's so many. Thank you. That's uh, that's a great answer, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Lorian wants to know if in the you showed us briefly the spooky house image uh, earlier. Uh, she's yeah. wondering. Uh, the, the 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 haunted house I think you had earlier on the screen. Um, she's wondering if you can tell us which brush you used to create the impression of foliage around the tree in the right background. Uh, oh, okay. So, so this bit over here. Um, I think that was that was just all manually done, and then I've like copied the um, the branches over and over again. This one is actually on on YouTube if um, if you look for it. It's quite a recent one. Um, but yeah, I, I think I drew this this branch here. Um, make this a little bit smaller. Yeah, I drawn I drawn this branch here, and and then I just copied it and rotated it, free transformed it, and we ended up. With a, a bunch of different um, variations of that branch layered over the top, <clears throat> and you can see that that kind of splat that I've put over there as well. So I've thrown the texture in just to um, just to give it a little bit more information. There's a little bit of detail in there. Um, the the foliage down here is a a custom fern brush. Uh, I tend to use this quite a lot. I'll put it in red so you can see it. Oh, we're not picking up the underlying colour. Um, but yeah, it's it relies on pressure. So so it'll be really small and it'll be really big. So you can kind of get these these ferns just with a couple of single strokes, and that's that's what's going on down here. Um, saves a lot of time. Obviously, you you'd be there forever trying to draw all of these these tiny little um, parts of the uh, of the leaf. Um, I tend to tend to lock it because it's, it's like a, it's an opaque shape now and then I can use um, another brush change the color and then you can you can blend the um, the bottom into the picture you can leave the, the top bits quite bright if you if you wanted to uh, I'll kind of dab this uh, mixer brush over the top and it'll it'll do a lot of the blending for me um so yeah we, we've got a bit of pink kind of showing through there but 
it's it's starting to starting to blend in. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the foliage it was it was all kind of manually manually drawn all, all of this bit and then just copied. Um, this these trees here they they're just a um, couple of straight lines and then I've um, I've blocked those. I've locked the layer and then um, added a texture over the top. So I'll show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, which tool for the best? So I'll try, I'll try the scratch tool again. Um, yeah, I'll probably go with a darker, darker color initially. And we can just put something like that in. Um, there wasn't actually any branches on these two at all. They're, they're just um, just tree trunks. So if I now lock that layer, um, I've got this snow rock texture brush. These uh, these are all brushes that I've, <laughs> I've had for far too long, to be honest. Uh, I'll select that color and then. I can just add that in and it's locked so it's not it's not gonna go um anywhere else. Um yeah, I hope that hope that helps. That's great, thank you. Um but yeah, let's say this is um a video it's 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 on it's on YouTube, so you can see the the whole uh, thing come together, and you can see the the glow brush um, coming into play in these windows here. <clears throat> I think for the for the main part of it, I probably selected the uh, the window. I'll just try and show you this again. Um, so. I'll just do with this section here. So I'd probably make um, a quick copy of that. So just um, copy and paste. And then that's locked. I'll select the, the glow brush. Pick that color, I'll drag it down into um, this bottom half. And then we can build that up. Probably want a bit more colour. Um, once you once you've you're happy with the. The window. I've taken the the lock off that, and then you can just draw draw your windows in, and then you've you've got that glow shining through. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's another little way of using um, the the glow brush. I mean, you could still lock that layer again now if you wanted to put more onto it. Um, now you've got those gaps missing because I've, I've actually used the eraser to cut that out. Um, so you could you'd still really go through this. Um, but yeah, that's that's another glow brush use. Um, <clears throat> yeah, probably probably haven't got time to turn this into uh, anything now, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. Thanks, Davey. Uh, that was really a great job at answering a lot of questions. So thanks again. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, it's, it's important to make good use of your color and values um, and Obviously, we're using um, a digital application, so use everything that you can um, to help speed things up. Um, quite often, I'll 
I'll copy and free transform things. Um, so um, some people kind of see that as cheating in a way, like if people are traditional painters and they, they don't use digital, they, they tend to get quite offended by uh, by things. But um, yeah, I, I just think it's uh, it's a more efficient way of um, of doing things and, and getting a getting a good result. Um, gives you the freedom to experiment as well a lot more. Um, when you're doing stuff digitally, you've you've got all your layers. You can edit them um, later on if you need to. Um, it's just it tends to just make life um, a lot a lot easier to be honest. To that point also, um, someone was asking about, do you start off with a simple sketch before you start the painting, or do you have an exact idea as to where to end up? You know, uh, with digital, you can have the flexibility to iterate as you go. So what kind of process do you have, Davey? Um, I, tend to, I tend to do a thumbnail in pencil. So I'll probably sit just at home, I might, I might be watching, a film or something or or just sitting there just just sketching away in um in a sketch pad so um just just any old cheap sketch pad uh mechanical pencil and if i'm if i'm thinking of of an idea then i, I might do um about 10 little sketches um they'll they'll literally be like 60 second tiny little sketches um and then I might pick one of those to to move forwards. Um, sometimes I, I, I don't have an idea, and I just kind of um, sometimes that that that's the best thing when you, you don't really know what you're doing, and um, you just you just try a few things. Um, that can that can actually work out quite well. Um, but generally, it's a yeah, it's a sketch pad, and I've I've got an, an initial idea, so I'm just trying to um, get that down on a piece of paper. Um, I will have a an image on a on my second screen, so that's that's my reference, um, and there, there can be photographs as well sometimes that I might. I might put a few photographs together on a on a page, make um, almost like a photo bash image, and then I might use that as as my reference. So it could be like four or five different photographs all stuck together, and you might even paint over it a bit as well, and add shadows, and, and make it obviously completely different to to the um, to the original photographs, but. Um, that's something that I've started to do quite recently. Um, it's it's added some realism um, to the paintings that, that I've been doing because it's it's relying on some actual forms and actual light. So it's um, I think it's good to try and have a balance between producing stuff that's purely from your imagination and using reference if you if you go down the route of just creating things from your imagination sometimes they they get a little bit too cartoony um so you, you need some of that that realism that kind of gritty um texture that that you might not put in there if you if you're just trying to just think about it and not actually look at what happens in real life sort of thing Yeah, that's a great tip for uh, new and uh, you know advanced users to use reference images for uh, bringing a more real bringing more realism to their work. Um, do you have any um, tips on how to go about finding reference images? Do you use places like Pinterest, or do you prefer to take your own photographs? Um, yeah, I do a bit of both. Um... I, I tend to take photographs everywhere I go. Um, I've, I've always got thousands on my phone. 
um, if I see some, <coughs> uh, excuse me, if I see some interest in light somewhere, it, it might not be um, I like what what the image is that I'm, that I'm looking at. I'm just literally looking at how the light's bouncing off something. Um, but then I'll I'll take a walk through a forest or something, and and the light's coming through the trees, and and it's bouncing off the ground, and then you know you can you can get some really good ideas from just going out and observing how um, light behaves in in certain situations. So I I do tend to take as many photographs as I can wherever I go, but then I will use things like Pinterest as well. You, you can't take photographs of everything unless you <laughs> you travel in the world. Um, so so yeah, I, that's something again that I've probably started started to use a little bit more recently. Um, started to look at um, a lot more kind of Egyptian stuff. Um, it's not something I can I can take a photograph myself. So. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I do have these uh, photo packs that I have on ArtStation, um, and there, there might be 200 photos in each one. Uh, I kind of sell those as as reference packs, and a few yeah, a few people kind of buy them every every week or so, and they they seem to be useful. Um, but they're mainly like forests and, and rocks, um, and just kind of natural textures um, and there's some old buildings as well things like that um, 3d artists will tend to use them um, but it's um, it's something I'm always kind of collecting is the uh, the reference library it's kind of never-ending you always um, you always find a use for for something that you photographed that you, that you've kind of you felt really inspired about at the time. That's great, thank you. Um, Jessica is wondering: Do you always work full screen, or do you zoom in for details? Um, I tend to work full screen um, most of the time. This is um, a habit that I've picked up from doing stuff on YouTube. Um, I've kind of found it a bit annoying sometimes when you watch YouTube videos and it's zooming in and out really fast and you can't really um, kind of enjoy watching it. It's just it, just going a bit kind of crazy. So I got into this habit of always drawing full screen. Um, and it's, it's kind of a good thing, to be honest, because I used to zoom in um like way too much and sometimes when you've zoomed in um and then you've you've been noodling away on some details and then you you fully zoom out again you you can't really see what what you've been doing and and it looks odd anyway because you've you've got this small part of your painting that's just got this um this heavy detail on it and and then i mean where do you go from there do you detail the whole thing it, you could be there for um, for a very long time, so it's um, I'd say it's good advice to not zoom in too much. I mean, if you if you really really need to, I'd do it about five percent of the of the whole painting. So um, if I'm drawing a a character and I need to do the eye or something like that, the eye is like the focal point, then I might zoom in. Uh, and just kind of get that get that eyelid right and the uh, the little spot of light that will be on the eye so it, it kind of draws your attention to that particular point but I definitely won't zoom in all over the whole thing it will it will be very very sparingly um, but yeah I'd, I'd advise people to to not really zoom in too often if you can help it it's, um, uh, yeah, it's a bad habit. <laughs> that's um, oh, good to know, and thank you. Um, so I just wanted to uh, remind us that we're at the top of the hour. Uh, thanks for answering a lot of those questions, Davey. Did we 
Um, did we not get to anything that you had already planned for us? Um, is there some tips you want to show or share before we leave for today? Um, I, 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 no, I, don't, I think we kind of briefly touched on on everything. I mean, maybe I went through the um, the initial stage quite quickly, but um, if, uh, if I'm yeah, if I'm looking through what we went through, uh, maybe I didn't touch on the uh, the free transform of the texture. Um, this this was something that I was kind of talking about earlier. So that's just um, a custom texture brush that I've got, and just to get a a nice perspective, I tend to squash um, the whole thing down, and then you can pull pull the perspective around. Um, and it, it just really helps to to give you a bit of depth, to be honest. So instead of having this this flat shape, now you you've got a bit more of um, a distortion um, going on, and you can really really flatten these out, and then pull them around. So it's it's useful um, when you've got a flat texture brush and then you, you just want to be able to give it a bit more perspective. But that's that's something that I tend to use um, quite a lot as well. It's um it's a good tip for getting depth um, within the painting. Yeah, that's uh, super cool because you just used a few strokes and it it was it wasn't even a shape but you just use some strokes and distor uh, distorted it and that looks great that's a great tip yeah i mean you can you can obviously draw into it as well um but yeah it shouldn't shouldn't take you too long just to do something like this um and it's it's quite effective um You've got all this information from the texture. It's it's something that you probably struggle to do by hand because um, we'll tend to keep repeating um, certain brush strokes. So you, you probably wouldn't get this um, natural looking texture if you're doing it by hand. It, it would look a bit a bit too um, a bit too flat. But, um, but yeah, that's. Um, that's probably a, a, a tip for finishing off. <laughs> Thank you, Davey. Um, thanks once again for joining us today uh, for this really great session. Um, and thank you everyone for taking the time today and joining us uh, for this webinar. Um, have a great rest of your day and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.